was in the beginning. The world was created. And so, as in Kabbalah, there is this story that says that God was very upset with Adam and Eve, and so he said, you're out, out of the garden. And the mother of the goddess, because she was always around, you know, there was no just one person creating all this. You know, we, God is neither male nor female, but in the two, in their creation process, in their play, of one to two, they had this little argument going on because God said, I don't like it, they're out. And what does the mother say? If they're out, I'm out. And so he said, okay. <laughs> so because we wanted to go out, the kids wanted to go out, we always want to go away. The kids always want to explore, we always want to get into stuff. So what does the mother do? She follows after you. Sometimes annoyingly, right? Patting, wiping all the stuff off. <laughs> but she's always there, always there, no matter what. The Shekinah is always there. That breath of the goddess, that, that very essence of who we are can never leave us. 26 other times in the Bible, the divine is referred to as feminine aspects, as mother aspects. But still, in our patriarchal world, it continues to come out in the form of he. But how could the divine be a he or a she? Neither. But I think today's a pink day. Because I think we need a little more pink in our divinity. I think we need a little more of that essence of femininity to have the complete package. Don't sell yourself short. Take the time to think about because the divine is always that ultimate aspect of that which we are looking for in that. So in the male is that ultimate aspect of male, but it's also that ultimate aspect of female, of divine mother, of that nurturing, of that holding, right? of that birthing. In our um, Declaration of Intent, that comes from the original Arabic, uh, uh, Aramaic, Aramaic version of the Lord's Prayer. It says, not our Father, it says, O birther, O birther, one that births forth. Right? And that's this idea of God as mother, one that births forth. And as mothers know, you know, even th that the first thing you want to do after you birth them is want to hold them and keep them and nurture them and comfort them and be with them. But we can't, can we? Right? It doesn't work out that way. So what happens is we have to give them this love. This love that transcends time and space. And this is the aspect of Mother Goddess the Divine. Giving us this unconditional love that will transcend time and space. The story of uh, our youngest son, when he was going to um, nursery school or pre-K, I don't know, whatever, that's to three-year-olds or something they go that age. So he's very young, three or four, because two older brothers were already in school and he missed playing with the boys and he was going to go play with the boys at this little school. So he goes in there and there's 12 children, including himself, which is 10 girls and two boys. And the only other boy, because he's only used to playing with boys and he wants to play with the boy, the only little boy is crying his eyes out. Some of my son sitting there waiting waiting and waiting for the little boy to stop crying. He didn't stop crying and came home. Next time he comes back and the boy is crying again. So he walks up to him and goes, why are you crying? I want to play with you. The other little boy goes, I miss my mommy. The little son turns to him and says, how can you miss your mommy? She's in your heart. Now, the teacher was crying, and the assistant was crying, <laughs> and by the time we got there to pick him up, everybody was crying. 
<laughs> but the innocence of a child to send us the message of that divine love. And we lose it along the way in our wanting to move on and take our will back and say, sorry, my way, not your way. And thinking that we are being judged for that. When this love is in our hearts and we can carry that love with us, there is no judgment. There is only that nurturing and that reminder that I hold you here in my heart, knowing that the heart of the God is as vast as the ocean itself, even faster, it's vast as the universe. So she's constantly calling to us to remind us of that. And so here she is, as she transcends all kinds of traditions in every way. In our words of wisdom, I picked the three different pieces in there that I thought were just really cool. As I first took our prayer of peace, you know, the change of the rosary. We had the rosary in our song, Gentle Woman, the original version, and this is the new G-O-L version of it. And we've taken that even when and did the rosary walk around if, uh, the shrine of Our Lady of the Island. It's a beautiful experience. So this is a wonderful prayer. Take it with you and use it because it's very powerful because the Divine Mother has appeared many times and what she said is to say those prayers. Say the prayers, you know, but put, put that. Remember what is in the womb. Remember how we are nurtured. Remember that all is given to us. All we need to do is to connect to it. So, the first part of the words of wisdom comes from the book about Mary as master, right? An ascended master. Mother Mary um, ascends, the story is she ascends into heaven in the Christian tradition, but then for those of us that understand that there are some ascended masters out there that actually help us and assist us. Well, according to this version, that Mary, what she does is she goes to the hall of karma. And she stands there, fierce, strong. And as the, that whole karma comes up and there's like, well, look what this one is doing. That's my job. You got a problem? <laughs> and she stands there with conviction that our essence, our spirit is true. And who we are can never be changed or altered in any way. And she will hold that vision, the immaculate concept of each and every one of us. The immaculate concept. That changed everything for someone who grew up with nuns. <laughs> very, very traditional old-fashioned nuns. To hear that this Mary now is looking at me with eyes of the immaculate concept. Holding an immaculate concept of me. So there's no fear to put her anymore because there will be no judgment and I can carry her and she will carry me and we will never, never be alone. The second one is from the Miss of Avalon, which is not a true story, but it's a really cool story. If you haven't read the book, it's a really fun. It's the female aspect of the Knights of the Round Table and King Arthur. And so all the, uh, the Wiccan groups or the Celtic, you know, the women are trying to help um, maneuver some things. And then, of course, when people get involved in things and spirit is trying to move us in a certain direction in our lives and we get in the way. And so one of the things they thought is that this patriarchy is going to take over and there's going to be no goddess anywhere. And this paragraph comes from towards the end. I want to learn the story for you. But it's really saying that, you know, I will always be there. And this is true of it. I mean, even any, any faith, any faith you talk about, she's there. Why is she not prominent? Why is she not so strong? Well, just look at Hinduism and look at Kali. Kali, the vision of Kali, she's finishing a battle and she's holding a beheaded head in her hand. But that head is the ego. That head represents that full self that we think we are. She says, come to me and I will cut that off because I'm going back to the truth of who you are. Power of the goddess. She comes in many forms, in many ways, in all the traditions 
and she will never, never not be there. And so finally, in the last piece, comes out of this book, which is Wild Mercy from Mirabai Star, because she wants to remind us, too, of this fierce and powerful aspect of mother, of the feminine in our lives. So, um, the, I love the way she just calls to all of us with all these different goddesses and telling us and reminding us where they are and here they are and, and look at them coming out in all different ways for us, here for us. And one of the elements they bring, the goddess mostly though, is compassion and mercy. We don't understand those words because hard for us to hold that in our lives. To be the one who gives the compassion. To be the merciful one. Merciful doesn't mean I judge you. Merciful means that I am extending grace onto you because I'm allowing grace to flow through me. And we don't have that when we hold on to an idea of who someone is supposed to be and what someone did to us. Without reconciliation, without freedom from our resentments, my friends, we're never going to understand and really allow that divine mother to truly nurture us and hold us. And what I'm saying, want to really reinforce today, more than anything else, is to understand the, what we have given up when we have let go of the hand of the mother and the feminine aspect of the divine is that we let go of a, a sense of compassion and healing. We shut out this a 